wisdom for us. Hallelujah.
we're going to celebrate the fact that we are forgiven this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I am forgiven because you were forsaken.
Do you ever wonder just how the God in heaven can use someone like me, an everyday person? It's, it's such an honor. It's an honor to be His child. And we need to remind ourselves maybe daily just exactly who we are. We need to remind ourselves that we are children of the King. We have His royal blood running through us. We walk in His victory. When we speak to these things and ask them to be removed, it's like we're just, especially when we've confronted the Lord about it, where His Word is the one that's going out, not ours. It's so awesome. I get so excited when I have a chance to preach to somebody or to teach somebody or to pray for somebody. It's, it's an honor to know that God would use somebody like me. Amen. And then I thought about Jesus and the disciples. Now, verse 18 chapter 4 of Matthew says, And Jesus, walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net uh, into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And straightway they left their nets, and followed him. You know, it's so awesome. It's, it's so awesome because they didn't they they didn't know Jesus. He was a guy, a stranger walking by. I'm sure they had heard of him. But he's going he's walking by and he looks at him and says, Y'all, come follow me, I'll make your pictures of men. And they didn't hesitate. They didn't say, let me put my nets up. They didn't say, well, we got to do this, we got to do that. No. They left what they were doing and they followed Christ. Oh, to think that we would be just that type of person. And when Jesus comes by and talks to us and says, Brother Ron, Brother Bill, Brother James, I want you to go to the hospital or to this person's house and pray. Even if they hadn't asked, and we, we would be ones to say, yes, Lord, I'll go. I'll go. And don't even give it a second thought. Just get in the car and go. You know, I know that if I'm having surgery or somebody else is having surgery, I know one thing. Brother Bill's going to be there if he is all, if it's at all possible. And now Brother Ken will be there as well. So, you know, we don't have to go into these things that sometimes make us nervous without having someone to pray over us. I don't know about you, but when I was having surgery on my back, I wanted somebody to pray. I had been. But I wanted God to guide that surgeon's hands. He's working on that spine. I don't want him to get into it. I want him to do his work, put his hardware in and do all that he's going to do. And I don't want that to be all that he does. I don't want him getting into my spine. I don't want him paralyzing me or anything else. I want God to guide me. When I had gallbladder surgery, I wanted God to guide that surgeon's hands. Yeah, I had my knee replaced. Yeah, I wanted that surgeon's hands to be guided. You know, I praise God we've got these men that can do all this stuff, but it doesn't hurt to have that little added prayer to go along with it. I mean, I'm only human and I don't, they trusted me to run them big old machines out there in, in Stephenville. And uh, I'm quite sure that they wanted me to know what I was doing. 
or they wouldn't have turned me loose. You know, and I prayed going in. Some of the parts I ran, I prayed saying, Lord, let this night go smooth. Without any problems. And it usually did. But, you know, Jesus was walking by and he's calling these two. And he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men straight away they left their nets and followed him. And going from thence, he saw two brethren, James, son of Zebedee, and John, his brother in a ship, with Zebedee. And uh, they're, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm reading two lines now. Yes. With Zebedee their father and mending, uh, mending their nets. And he called them, and they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. Isn't it amazing that all Jesus had to do is say, Come. And these men left what they were doing and they followed him. You know, it's supposed to be just that easy for you and I. When the Lord comes by and he says, Come, we shouldn't hesitate. We should say, Yes, Lord, and go. But I know from experience that there is times he said, Rock, come, I need you to go over here. And I'm like, Are you sure, Lord? And I'm, and I'm sure he's thinking, Well, if I wasn't sure, I wouldn't ask you. <laughs> you know, when I ask somebody to do something, uh, I asked him because I wanted them to come and do it. You know, and, and yet, I, sometimes I'd say, I'm sure, I mean, I mean, are you sure? And then he'd say, yes, go. I'm like, but I don't know. And he'd say, I don't care if you don't know these people or not. I want you to stop what you're doing here. Go over here. This person needs to minister to and at the time, I was on my way to minister to another family at the hospital. And God said, no, I need you to come back. And when I got there, the, the husband, he heard, he heard my voice. I don't know him. I didn't know him. I know him now. But he came, walked straight over to me, shook my hand, and he said, I've been praying for you to come. I need you to help me. He had just lost his daughter. And he said, I need you to help me. And we sat there by his fireplace and we sat there on the on the rocks that were there in front of it, and we talked. For, I have no idea how long it was, but by the time we left, the man that was so broken had a smile on his face. We he followed us all the way out to the car and said, "Thank you, thank you, thank you for being obedient." Folks, when God calls us, He's got a job for us to do. He had a job for these disciples to do. Yeah. He needed them to go and to do uh, things that, well, He could have done, but He needed someone else. He needed people like you and I. You know, God's been building an army for an awful long time an army of soldiers that are willing to pray, an army of soldiers that are willing to go and to do, even if they're not sure. I'm sure if I was to talk with each one of you, you probably got an example of a time that God said that He wanted you to go and to do something. Maybe to pray over somebody. Maybe it was to take them a pie. Maybe it was to take a dinner to them. Or something like that and you were obedient. That's what God's asking. He's not asking the hard stuff. 
if I wasn't qualified to talk to that man that day, he wouldn't have sent me. I thought I wasn't qualified. I thought, well, God, I'm still struggling through this myself. How am I going to talk to him? But God said, oh, you, you need to go. And so, like I said, we turned around. But that's all God's asking. When he comes by and he says, come, we need to drop what we're doing and say, yes, Lord, I'll go. I've had times when he asked me just to come up to the church and pray. I'm like, well, I can pray at home. And he's like, no, I want you to come go to the church and pray. So I got up came up here and prayed. Didn't hurt a thing. Probably helped me a whole lot. <laughs> I needed that extra time, that extra one-on-one -on -one time with God. I had to know just who I was. I had to know that I was a child of the King, that God had called me, and I needed to know His voice, and I wanted to be able to answer, Here am I, Lord, every single time He called us. Amen. He wants us to be that child. He wants us to, to lift him up. He wants us to serve him. He wants us to go. Now I looked in uh, Acts chapter 5. <coughs> Starting in verse 12. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonderings, wonderings brought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And uh, rest, there was no man to join himself to them. But the people magnified them, and, the, and believers were the more added the more to the Lord. Multitudes, both of men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds with couches that at least the shadow of Peter might pass, might overshadow some of them. And there came bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, every one. Wouldn't it be awesome if we were get to get to that place within the Lord that He was using us so mightily that when we were walking down the streets or walking down the halls of the hospital like Brother Bill's talked about before, and we just pray and every single person get healed. Glory. God did it before He can do it again. I have no doubt in my mind that He can do it again. And if he wants to use me, well, I might think of that a bit odd, but if he wants to use me, then he can. What if God starts moving here at Elm Grove and the power just starts flowing from the front to the back, from one side to the other, and we have people coming in, driving by, seeing what's going, seeing that there's something going on inside. Who knows what time of day it is, but something's going on. And people come in and they start making their phone calls on them cell phones and say, hey, y'all need to come down here to Elm Grove. God's moving. Oh, yeah. if, you got, if you need healed, if you need prayer for anything, come by. I don't know what's going on, but the power of God is as strong. Y'all need to just get down here. If you just get on the property, maybe God will touch you. That may not be our shadow, but still, if we just get, if they, can you imagine if people just got on the property and God started moving, God would slay them in the spirit, God would convict them and they get saved. 
they come in and they need healing and they would get healed yeah. and get excited and go tell another people. Pretty soon there wouldn't be room on these four acres to contain everybody. And I dare say if it need be if we and it just started spilling over the outside and we could set speakers upside outside we've done it before. And we could start with uh, ministering to a multitude of people. God can and will do it again if we'll just yield to Him. God wants to use you and I to be the one that reaches out to that next person, to the people that we come in contact with, the people we don't know, the people that need ministering to that maybe nobody else knows anything about it. But God does. And if we are the person in Christ that we need to be, and we're living for Him the way that we need to be, then maybe the next time somebody needs somebody and they're at their house and they're at their lowest point, maybe God will send you. Come on. I tell you what, when I left there, when I went there, I was as nervous as could be. I didn't know what I was going to say, do, or anything. When I left, I floated. I floated out of there to know that God chose me to go and to minister to somebody at their point of need. And you know, we should all count it an honor and a joy to serve Him and to follow Him and do what He asked us to do. Yeah. When He asked us to. Then when the question is asked, who are you? We can say, I am a child of God. Yeah. And I know who walks with me. I know who talks with me. I know who leads me each and every day. I know that if the need arose, I could walk across that lake to get to somebody. I would definitely have to be the Lord to tell me that. I would not do it on my own. I'm not that afraid or crazy. I put my foot in that water and it didn't, it didn't part. And my foot went to the bottom. It didn't stay on top. So I guess it wasn't God. It was just me on the test. But, you know, just think. I, I was laying there thinking last night when they were going across the Jordan and the people the, the guys were carrying the car. And there's water. And they reached up and put their foot down. And when they did, their foot didn't get wet. And it didn't get stuck in the mud either. Well, the water departed. God's children went through on the dry ground. And there wasn't just 10 or 15 of them. There's millions. Well, can you imagine water being here, water parting, and when it parted, it was dry ground. I tell you what, no wonder they put up a monument to remind them. And the, when their kids ask, what, what are these rocks for, they can tell them. But you know, somebody, that priest, and the man, uh, they had to be willing to say, okay, I know this is what I'm supposed to do. They took it upon themselves. They went in the water department. I don't know what God might call you to do. I have no idea. You probably don't. But God knows, and He knows he knows just exactly what you're capable of doing and what you're not capable of doing. And He won't call you to do something you can't do. You know, I just, I just keep thinking about that over and over. Especially this last week. You know, we say we can never do anything like what these people did. Anything. The truth is we can do anything. Once again, 
we get to be down who we're supposed to be. We get to be down that child of God, Lord, that God chooses to use at that particular time to minister to whoever it is. We're able. God's not a respecter of person. We're the ones that limit us. God can use you to pray for someone for healing. That means He can use all of us for that. Amen. For troubles that others go through. Or even do spiritual warfare for the church. I know, I know that my God can use each and every one of us. I know that that my me and myself, if you don't know what else to pray for, pray for me. Pray for Brother Bill. We know he's using. Pray for Brother Ken. All of us can use an extra prayer. If God leads you to, you just stop what you're doing and pray. I have stopped and I prayed for a couple of missionaries. I have no idea what was going on. Got up in the middle of the night feeling like I should. I may never know. Or I may learn down the road sometime. But I know that when God says, I need you to pray, He wakes me up and He says, I need you to pray for. I promise you, I sleep hard. My alarm will go off in the middle of the night to take more medicine. And I'll sleep through it. I won't hear it. I think that once I get good and sound asleep, that an explosion could happen outside the window and I, it wouldn't wake me up. But God, 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 that's really great I always said. But God, He can wake me up. He can have me praise. And I don't have to need to know any of the details. And the whole thing that got me to thinking about this in the first place was last week Brother Bill was talking talk to little man about Jesus' first miracle. Who would have ever thought that his first miracle would have led me all the way around there and then back? I don't even remember all that Brother Bill said. My mind just, it just took off. <laughs> and I thought about that miracle a little bit and I thought, well, so first, his mother, she told the servants to do whatever he's asked. And they had to be willing to obey her. That's one, that's part one of it. When he said to fill the vessels, they didn't go get the little bitty quarter sized mason jars. They got the big ones. They went out to the well. It took a while to fill them. And if it had been me, while I was a filling them, I'd stick my finger in that water and taste it. I still water. I don't know what he's going to do. And just keep going and keep going. They finally get them full, and then they carried them in there, and they set them down, and he said, okay, draw. And go take them to the guy that's in charge of all this stuff. And they grew. And they knew it. They knew beyond any reasonable doubt, nothing, that they had drawn water themselves from a well that they draw from regularly. And it was water that went into their pots. And I'm sure they probably stuck their fingers in and tested it. And yet, when it was presented, they said, why did you save the best for last? Well, I, I know I'm kind of partial to us, us here. And I know God's done a lot of things all down through the centuries and the years and all this stuff. But I believe He's saving the best for last. I believe He's saving the best for the last days. I believe that we're living in those last days and that God is going to do 
his best and he's going to show out and show what he can do and he's going to use you and I to do it. That's who we are. I went back up to the top and I, and I, I looked at it and what I had written down. And I thought, have I ever wondered who I am? Yeah, I have. But I know it now, no. And what I was made of. Yeah, I wondered that from time to time. But you know, I never went without having my hand in the hand of that nail scarred hand of Jesus. You know, all of us go through problems from time to time. But we need to realize that we are living in the last days. And I tell you what, there's so much evil that's going on around us. Sometimes my mind can't even comprehend it. It doesn't need to comprehend it. I get drawn in. All I know is the evil is, is everywhere I look. And God is asking about each and every one of us, who are you? Do we really, really know? And if we do, are we willing to drop our nets, drop what we're doing, get in the car and go? He asked us. All week long, like I said, I've been thinking about who am I. And I also know that sometimes we go through hard times. I'm hoping that Sister Nancy's got a song or two or three. But when we go through those times, we need to come back to the Lord. We need to get a hold of His hand once again. Yes. I don't want us, if we're struggling or if we just need to touch, to walk out these doors without knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt. Without knowing or even without experience that special touch from the Lord. I know there's times I've needed prayer. I've needed that all. I still need I still go to it. Even though I know who I am. Folks, if you're struggling with anything this morning, or if you've never known Jesus, I invite you to come down here and pray. Open up your heart and allow God to minister. I promise you there's a number of warriors that will come and surround you. Don't worry about what anybody says. Don't worry about what anybody might think. If you need prayer for anything, come down. Get a hold of the Lord. Let others help you carry that burden. So that when we leave, Beyond the shadow of that, just who it is. Amen.
like Jesus prayed. Not my will, Father, but yours be done. In every circumstance, in every situation. God bless you. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. Go tell somebody about the love of God. We always find time to talk about politics. We always time to find time to talk about food. We always find time to talk about kin folks and all of our hang-ups. But let's spend a little more time talking about Jesus. Amen? Amen. Let's all stand as we're dismissed. Brother Ken, would you dismiss me? Father, we thank you, God, for this time together. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Father, for your presence. Lord, we give you honor and praise and glory. Father, I, I ask God that you bless each and every one here. God, I'm going to speak a blessing upon them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Keep them safe, God, as they travel. And bring them back, God. God.